What, Ribi, our great one? Yahushua, is saying to all of the twelve tribes of Israel, then and even today, my friends, you have become a Zornor, harlot, for serving this fake Elohim in the world, you have been deceived by him, this forger and counterfeiter, the most dangerous evil one, Ha Satan, but most important for doing such, he now owns your soul, unless one repents and is born from above, and begins today, by following the true and only one, Yahushua, Ha Moshiach, Omain. This video presentation is from, Ador, the congregation of Smyrna, who are richly blessed in his inspired and living word, is proud to present the study of Yahuda, Jude. This great book in your Bible, is the shortest but one of most inspired and most powerful, revealing book ever written for us the living, especially for these end days, addressed to the elect of Elohim, the ones first coming into his congregation. Omain. But for now let us talk about, Kokmat, Elohim, the wisdom of both our father, Yahuwah and his son, our Yahushua, for wisdom is understanding Elohim's word, Devaha Kayim, his word of life, as written only by him, and his true, Talmidah, disciples, hunger for his, Emet, truth, by finding life through the riches of his kingdom. For one has to uncover the words written in error by the translators, that are designed to only deceive and take your living soul. For one has to dig very deep to find life, Devaha Kayim, in the original, Taha, Hasha, Dorba, the pure, clean inspired word of life, as it was first spoken by the Ruachimet, the spirit of truth, the word of life, as it was originally written down, through the anointed men and the women of our Bible, as they were instructed to do so, as it was first spoken to them, the word of life, and not the words of death, as written by the hands of evil men. Only, with the help of his, Ruach Kordosh, Holy Spirit to get his confirmation. As you study, you are led by his spirit of truth, to the ancient paths of the east, where you find the old olive tree, as you discover its deep roots in the past, of those bore dull, bork ear, Morshiak, Minerza, the separated, anointed ones, as they first wrote it down, his inspired, separated living words of life, for all of Yahuwah's children, to learn with full understanding, all things, the good with the bad, Aleph, and Taf, from the very beginning to the end of this world, in order to find out, what is coming upon us and to warn those children, who really love him, by showing him through our actions and deeds, that means by doing things, his way, Sadiq, the just and the righteous ones, and by really studying his love letter, and then being sealed with his wisdom of life, written for those that truly love him, and by offering up, our special love, pertaining to, Ben Yaqid, his only begotten son, Yahushua, Moshiaha Olam, who saved us from this evil in the world, through his actions and deeds of love for us, Habi Korhak Kam Min Hammi Team, first begotten from the dead, and the Hikai, the living one, as he freely offered up his life and died, in order to unite us back to the living spirit, our Abba, Father, our Yahuwah, who really loves us, our King and the Creator of all things created, in the past, present and future to come, Hallelujah, Amen and Amen. Now for a short study about your living soul for those who want to know. In describing the creation of Adam, the Torah says, Elohim formed man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils, a soul, breath of life, Nishma Chaim. Man, thus, became a living creature, Nefesh Chaya. The Torah is teaching us that the human soul came directly from Elohim's innermost essence, in the same way that a breath issues forth, from a person's lungs and chest cavity. Now there are three parts of a living soul. The soul consists of three parts which are called by the Hebrew names, Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama. The word Neshama is a cognate of Neshima, which means literally breath. Ruach means wind. Nefesh comes from the root, Nefesh, meaning rest, as in the verse, on the seventh day, Yahuwah, ceased work and rested, Nefesh. 
He exhaling a soul can be compared to a glass blower forming a vessel. The breath, Nishama, first leaves his lips, travels as a wind, Ruach, and finally comes to rest, Nefesh, in the vessel. Of these three levels of the soul, Nishama is therefore the highest and closest to Elohim, while Nefesh, is that aspect of the soul residing in the body. Ruach, stands between the two, binding man to his spiritual source. It is for this reason that divine inspiration is called Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew. Omain. Now our study is presented today, from the congregation of Smyrna, through the dispensation of time. And we thank you for watching and studying along with us. Omain. Jude, Yahuda, means Yah, is praised at all times, for revealing his truth, to his, Talmida, as a learned disciple, that is more like his teacher, Yahushua. Omain. Now Yahuda, Jude, the youngest brother of, Jacob, James, meaning the supplanter, to take over by replacing the government, or someone else, that was there, first. As Yahushua takes over this world from Hasatun, with the kingdom, and the government, of Yahuwah, now both of these earthly brothers, are the brother to Yahushua, through their same earthy, Eim, mother, Mariam, Mary, Omain. Now for the renewed covenant, Britadasha, our Messiah's teachings, with its roots in the Tanakh, the first covenant, his Torah teachings, from the old olive tree, that was planted thousands of years ago in the ancient soil of Israel, with its deep roots in the old prophets of Elohim, Omain. Now for some deep roots, my friends, in the renewed covenant, that was prophesied before time, starting herein. Yohanan, meaning Yah, who has favored, is his beloved John, chapter 15, verse 26, and 27. But when the Melitz Yosha, meaning the Preclate, which is the Advocate, Counselor, Helper, comes, whom I will send to you from Hath, meaning from our Father, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Himes, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from Hath, that one will give Solomedat, meaning, testimony, about me. 27, and Yushlikim, are the dedicated ones, will give Solomedat, testimony. Also, because from the beginning you are with me. In the English. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Verse 27 And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. For his Holy Spirit brings the Spirit of all truth, from the Father, Yahuwah, about his Son. Yahushua, and we his dedicated ones, the select elect, will give his testimony of all things, and be a witness of his amet, his truth, because we were with him, from the very beginning, we witnessed it all, meaning during the first earth of old, billions of years ago, during the overthrow of Hasatun, what we call the Katabole. Omain. Yohanan. John 16, verse. 12 to 16. Yet many things I have to tell you, but you are not able to bear them now. 13. But when that one has come, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Himes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but what things he will hear, he will speak, and the things that are to come, he will announce to you. 14. That one will give covered, means glory, to me, because he will receive of what is mine, and will announce it to you. 15. All things which half, the Father, has are mine, therefore, I said that of mine he receives and will announce it to you. 16. A little time and you no longer see me. And again a little time, and you will see me. In the English, verse. 12. Have yet many things to say unto you? but ye cannot bear them now. 13, how be it when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. 
14, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. 15, All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. 16, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. He is telling his selective elect, many things, but as one studies his inspired word, the rest will be revealed, at the time of the end. All things the Father has are his, meaning the knowledge of all things from the very beginning to the end. For he will take care of us, his elect and show it to only us, and not them in the world, for they will never believe or accept it. He is going back to the Father, but in a little we will see him again as many of us today claim we have. Now. T. Hillim, Psalms, 25, verse 5. Havath, lead me in thy hymns, and teach me, for thou art the Elohim of my salvation, on thee do I wait call him. In the English. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the Elohim of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. Hey, letter H, and Vaf, the letter W, as used in these verse are hidden in the original Hebrew text of the Tanakh, are profound and incredible truths, for these truths contained in the usage of the first six letters of the Hebrew alphabet. In particular, we find that the fifth and sixth letters, Hey and Vaf, contain a secret code, of rich significance and meaning. Let's explore some of these exciting truths that relate to the mystery of Yahushua the Messiah, creation, the purpose of human life, the redemption of mankind, and the end of this age. There is a great mystery hidden in the usage of the first six Hebrew letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and an even greater mystery in the meanings of the fifth and sixth Hebrew letters, the Vaf, and He, as they are used in the Old Testament. This mystery directly involves the head of Elohim, the creation of all things, the redemption and salvation of mankind and the coming of the Messiah, as Elohim is to restore the kingdom of Yahuwah to this earth. Unlike English and other languages, the Hebrew language, and the writing of the Hebrew scriptures, contains special codes involved in the very usages of certain letters, and a careful study of these usages leads to new insights concerning our Father's plan of redemption. In the Hebrew language, certain letters of the alphabet, by themselves, have meaning, as well as numerical values attached to them. The Hebrews at one time knew about this, but today it is lost to them in the world. For example, the number 5 in Hebrew, now 5 is 4 plus 1. Now we have a further revelation of a people called out from mankind, redeemed and saved, to walk with Elohim, hence, redemption follows creation. Inasmuch as in consequence of the fall, there, sin, of man creation, came under the curse, and was made subject to vanity, therefore man, and creation must be redeemed. If four is the number of the world, then it represents man's weakness, helplessness, and vanity, as we have seen. But four plus one, equals five, is significant of divine strength added to, and made perfect in that weakness, of omnipotence combined with the impotence of earth of divine favor uninfluenced, and then invincible, to cover only a few of the many, meanings of hey, five, for my friends, wisdom is older, than creation, and of the whole universe, O main. Now the letter Vaf, is W. The incredible significance of the Hebrew letter Vaf, goes beyond the letter itself. It is fundamentally involved with the numerical value of the letter as well. The Vaf, is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The number six represents the Shekinah, glory, four plus two, equals six. This is the world plus the word of Yahushua, as well as man, short of perfection, but it also represents the Messiah, who was born a man with all the human frailties this implies. Now let's take a careful look at the Vaf. It is an extremely interesting letter. The letter Vaf then represents grace plus one, that is, Yahuwah, the Father, plus his grace equals messianic redemption, and transformation. Vaf, 
pictures the salvation of stumbling, erring, sinful mankind through the grace of Yahuwah, which comes through both the Shekinah glory, and the Messiah. However, the letter Vaf, is also a word in Hebrew. It is the prefix of conjunction. In English, it can be translated and, but, or, even, etc. It is a uniting word, which unites myriads of concepts, including names, phrases, ideas, sentences, paragraphs, chapters, and even books. It also unites opposites. It unites manifold concepts, and links opposite concepts. It is the connecting link between heaven and earth. Thus it represents the missing link, between man and Yahuwah, that unites man with him. Therefore, this simple letter, represents the mediator between Yahuwah and mankind. Who is that mediator? The Shekhinah, is identical with Kavad, Hashem, meaning the glory of Elohim, which served as an intermediary, between Elohim and man, during the prophetic experience. That glory of Elohim, is the biblical term, and Shekhinah, in the Talmudic term, for the created splendor of light, which acts as an intermediary, between Elohim and man, and which sometimes takes on human form, what we call, Ibid. In the Old Testament the Shekhinah glory, of Yahuwah was the mediator, between Yahuwah and mankind. Then, in New Testament times, with the birth of the Messiah, Yahushua, became the great mediator between Yahuwah and man. Moses was a type of the Messiah, in that he was a mediator between Yahuwah's Shekinah glory, also a mediator, and Israel, at Mount Sinai. While Yahuwah's Shekinah glory was the mediator of the old covenant, the Messiah became the mediator of the renew, everlasting covenant. Saul, Paul writes in the book of Hebrews, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. We, as a followers of the true Messiah, Yahushua, we then come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and congregation of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to Elohim the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Yahushua, our Messiah, the mediator of the renewed covenant. During Old Testament times the Shekinah glory of Yahuwah, was the great connecting link between mankind and Yahuwah, our Father. People at that time could only have access to the Father through the Shekinah glory. Then, during New Testament times, Yohanan, John declared, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, than Yahushua, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, my say. Acts 4 verse 12. Both the Shekinah glory and Yahushua, the Mashiach, Messiah are represented by the Hebrew, Vaf, in symbolic understanding. Therefore, letter Vaf, itself is in the form of a hook. In fact, its name, Vaf, literally means to be hooked. As one is hooked on to the Messiah, through the Father, which guides us to his Son. Amen. Yehuda, Jude said in 1 verse 21 to 23. Keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our Messiah, Yahushua, our only Saviour unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now according to Mattathiah, Matthew 13, verse 55, Yahushua had four brothers, what we call half-brothers, as they say, James, Hoses, Simon and Judas. He had at least three sisters, as well, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Had there been but two, the word all would have been both. The Messiah, is called Mary's firstborn in, Matthew, 1 verse 25, and in Luke 2, verse 7, and the natural inference is that Mary had other children. The word prototokos is used only in these two passages and in Romans. 8 verse 29, Colossian 1, verse 15 and 18, Hebrew. 1, verse 6, 
11 verse 28, and chapter 12 verse 23, also in Revelation 1, verse 5, so that the meaning is easily ascertained. Had he been her only son, the word would have been monogens, which occurs in Luke 7 verse 12, 8 verse 42, 9 verse 38, of human parentage, and of the Yahushua, as the only begotten of the Father, in John 1 verse 14 and 18, chapter 3 verse 16 and 18, in 1 John 4 verse 9, in Hebrew, 11 verse 17, as it is used of Isaac, Abraham's only son according to the promise. In Psalm 69, a psalm with many predictive allusions to Yahushua's earthly life, verse 8 reads, I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. The gospel history records his brethren in association with his mother. After the miracle at Cana, which they probably witnessed, we are told that he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, and his brethren, and his disciples in John 2, verse 12. Later on they exhibit a spirit of opposition or jealousy, for while he is speaking to the people, his brethren, accompanied by his mother, sought him, apparently to hinder his work in Matthew 12, verse 46 and 47. Also in Mark 3 verse, 31 and 32, in Luke, 8, verse 19 and 20. In Mark 3, verse 21, reads, When his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. The expression his friends in their, margin reads kinsman, is hoi par or to, those beside him, and it denotes a relationship so close as to identify them with the brethren of verse 31. Again, John 7, verse 3 to 10, they showed lack of sympathy with his work, and the reason is given in verse 5, for neither did his brethren believe in him. They are not seen again till, after his resurrection, they are gathered in the upper room with the apostles, and with his mother and theirs in Acts 1, verse 14. Their unbelief had gone. James had become a servant to the Messiah, in, James 1 verse 1, through the appearance to him of the risen Saviour, 1 Corinthians, 15 verse 7 and, shortly, is a pillar, one of his elect, of the congregation in Jerusalem. Amen. Now for a new translation of the book of Yehuda, Jude, with many new revelations, as the Ruachi met, as the spirit of truth leads us, from the congregation of Smyrna. We pray that you see the light, and understand as the Ruach Kordosh, as his Holy Spirit leads you into all understanding about the truth of our faith, that was once taught, and known to the believers, but now lost to most in the world. The book of Yehuda, Jude gives the new believer, a quick summary of the events to come, as to the foundation of the book of revealing, the future visions of, Yohanan, John, who was in his spirit on the returning day of our king, the Hebrew Messiah. Meaning his spirit was alive and was taking out of his flesh body, like Saul, Paul who was taken to the Shemaim, heavens, to see our father's truth, as it is written and explained first hand, by only him, in his inspired and kordosh word. Amen. The contents of Yehuda, Jude's writings here, in part bear a strong resemblance to portions of two Kepha, Peter, but of the originality of both no one need doubt. Yehuda, Jude as he writes, as directed under the Ruach ha Emet. Spirit of truth from Elohim, is one of stern blame, disapproval, criticism and condemnation, as a final criticism or warning, as a cautionary reminder about their behavior in the world, against the kingdom of Elohim, right here on the earth. Elohim therefore is telling us, through Jude, that our father is not happy, in regard to certain serious evils brought in by men, who had professed to have received the grace of Elohim but warns them of their certainty of the last judgment, the final one, that is coming upon them, if they don't change and repent before time, both the living and dead, at the end of the world. Now let us begin our study with Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 1. From Yehuda, Evd, means servant or disciple, of the master, teacher, our king, the Messiah, Yehushua and a brother, 
of Yochef, James, to Harkaruim, means the called out ones, beloved in Elohim, Havenu, the Father, and Hashem Urim, means the guarded and protected ones, for the Master, our Teacher. In the English. Jude, the servant, disciple of, the Teacher, our King, the Messiah, Yehushua, and brother of James, to the Melesh, King, Hamoshayach, the Messiah, Yahushua, those that are sanctified by Elohim, the Father, and preserved in the Messiah, Yahushua, are called. Now those that are called first, are, the select, of the elect of Elohim, they are the ones that are called by Yahuwah, the Father, to do a service for his Son, Yahushua, these are the sanctified, ones. In the Hebrew is Kordosh, the separated ones, in the Greek Hagiadzo, holy ones, meaning they were purified, by the fire, consecrated and preserved, they are the special appointed ones, that are honored and respected, for what they did during the first earth of old, and now are the separated ones, from all the rest of his children, for they have already been purified, by the fire, from their actions in the past and now to do special service, for their king, the master, teacher, and our messiah, Yahushua, forever and forever, ha amen. Here is a verse that needs translation. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 2. Ratimim means his mercy, Hashem and Shalom, his peace, Hashem and Ahavaz, means his love, Hashem, to you abundantly. Hashem is Yahuwah, our spiritual father, is offering his peace, his love, and you shall receive his abundance, all that comes from him. Not the peace and love as the world knows, as he rested from all his labor, complete peace and rest of mind. His love, as he offered up his only begotten son for us, who is called the king of peace. Now just multiply the strongest love you have for your spouse or a family member by at least a billion times, to experience that kind of love he offer to those that truly love him. Now for the word. Rakamim is a plural noun and means. Compassions, tender mercies, the Hebrew root for atumim comes from the word rikam, which means the womb. To have compassion then means to express pity, as we have for the love of an unborn child. The quality of compassion is called rachamanat. In the English. This verse really comes up short as you will see, as we read verse 2 now. Mercy unto you, and peace, and love, be multiplied. This is only through one's salvation, where love is used as defined above, here in this verse. Like an unborn child, meaning you are to be born, but in this case reborn from the past as a living spiritual soul, once again from the first earth age, when your soul was first created only from above, now cleaned and purified by the fire, his ruach, in order to enter into his spiritual kingdom, once again. For the spirit is reborn and not the flesh, as Yahushua, our only spiritual teacher, taught us, as we honor and praise him daily in our prayers, forever and forever, ha amen. Now let us cover born again in the spirit. In the Hebrew is, your lad, means to be born and shornorn, means to repeat and do it again. In the Greek, is genu, is born, and deano then, is again. To be born again, in the ruach, spirit, the rebirth of the spirit man, that was dead and now alive, as it was in the very beginning, when the spirit man was first created, that unites us back to the father, and not the flesh, as so many don't understand. For the first man created in the flesh was Adam, who was a complete man, having both a living flesh and spirit body, as Eve was, until they both sinned in the garden, for they went with Ha Satan, after they both, were pre-warned by our father. Their spirit died and put their souls, in jeopardy of destruction, then the father threw them out of paradise, and he disconnected himself from them, and all mankind except for a mighty few to be born, his elect as he removed all his blessings, that were provided to live as royalty, being the son of man, in his kingdom in the flesh, here on the earth at that time. For we are talking about a spiritual kingdom here, for flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom, 
of Yahuwah, for he is a living spirit. When a person dies, his flesh goes back to the ground from whence it came, but his spirit, which carries his soul, the essence of him, the real spiritual, you, be it dead or alive. We pray this spirit man is alive through his salvation, as originally created, as a pure clean living soul, living in a spiritual body, goes back to the creator of it, our father, Yahuwah, Omain. Then many of his gifts you shall receive, once an individual is saved, by the blood of the lamb and renewed in the spirit. You are then preserved in the Messiah, because he gives you eternal life, both grace and peace, comes from that righteous path you are on, my friends, only through him, the king of peace, and our only saviour, Omain. Let us clear up very important point about the soul, my friends. When does the soul enter into the body? Do you know and are you correct? When the soul enters the body, this is considered life. The soul is the life source itself, and brings life to the body, and at the instant of death, that soul returns to Yahuwah, our father, the one that placed that soul, in the embryo at conception, and without the soul, life cannot begin in that embryo for it dies. Though Satan's courts of law today have ruled, that the soul is not in the body until it enters outside the womb. Now Elohim has warned each and every one of us through his word, that this is not so. If you are blind to this truth, and that murder, you are causing is done in innocence, or is it? Do you go by the standards of Elohim, or by the God of this world age, which is the standards of Ha Satan? When a ship or plane goes down, the record is counting the number of souls, not bodies, that died. For in wartime many dead bodies that go down, and men lost in battle, but they always count the number of souls within the bodies. We pray this has helped you all, and has cleared up your minds, as to our father's door bar, word of Emet, truth, Omain. Now let us study this verse in Hats on, Revelation 20 verse 5, for better understanding, now the seventh trumpet has already sounded, and we are all in spiritual bodies. The flesh age is done away with, and over, in this verse. And the rest of the messim, means the dead did not awaken, to Cheim, means from death to life, until Halef Shanim, after the one thousand years should be completed. Now this is the Tekia Harishina, first resurrection. In verse 6 as we read the Hebrew, Mushar and Kaddish, are the, blessed and separated ones, what you call the holy ones, are the ones having a part in the Tekia Harishina, the first resurrection. Only these special anointed ones, the Mavit Harshaini, the second death, does not of shil tone, means any authority, Samkat, but they will be Konim, the priests, of Yahuwah and of Moshiach, Messiah. Yahushua, and will reign with him for a left, one thousand, Shanim, years. In the English. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of Yahuwah and of Moshiach, Messiah, Yahushua and shall reign with him a thousand years. The dead ones are those that have the mark of the beast, six, six, six today. For they are waiting on the false messiah, for they believe he is coming soon, and will be the first to come, at sounding of the sixth trumpet. They serve him today, in those churches of doom, these are the good and bad ones, for they eat the fruit of that tree, which is ha sat on and they help him by spreading his lies in the world, by doing his bidding to deceive others in their evil work they perform, against the spiritual kingdom of the living Elohim. Then we have the bad seed, that don't have a hope of a chance, unless they repent and, walk with the Moshiach, Messiah, at once, Omain. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 3, Chavarim, Although I was very eager to write to you Anigarit, HaKodesh, concerning the Jilla, redemption, we share, 
but it suddenly became necessary to write you an urgent appeal to fight for the Emuna, which is our faith. The Emuna of the true Dat Ha Yehudit, means the faith of the law, the Torah, that was once understood, for all time handed over, and transmitted to the Kaddishim, the separated ones, long ago. In the English, which destroys the true meaning from the Hebrew. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Jude, is saying that he very prayerfully and carefully sought to write to us about our redemption. However he has a heavy heart, for those that don't understand the truth of our faith, as it was first taught, by the separated ones, the elect of Yahuwah, years ago. As Yahushua, taught us by exposing all things, including the warnings, as to what is coming upon us, as it is truly written in the Torah of life, through the prophets, the chosen ones of Yahuwah. That is totally lost to them, that are coming into our faith, what we believe in, to be true, as it was told to us. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 4. For certain men, and Shireshaw, men of wickedness, who wrote down long ago in the Sfarim, the biblical books of Yahuwah, for this harsh, for their condemnation, condemnation as guilty, by changing the inspired teachings. They now have infiltrated our ranks, men twisting the Chen Chest Ha Elohnu, twisting the true meanings of the Torah, about the action through His mercy and grace by offering us a renewed spiritual life with our Father, for He is Ruach, a living spirit, from death to a renewed spiritual life with our Elohim, as our Master and Teacher was renewed, and then they used what they wrote, as a license for sensual self-indulgence, and denying our only ribbon new and did new, our only spiritual teacher, and the Master of it, the Great One, our Melesh, King, HaMoshiach, the Messiah, Yahushua, Omain. Now for the English, translation misses the mark completely. And hides from us, how, and what they did these evil men. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Elohim into lasciviousness, and denying the only master Elohim, and our spiritual teacher, the master, the great one, our king, the messiah, Yahushua. Condemnation comes from the verb condemn, meaning to die in the pit of fire, to be consumed. For these evil men have used the grace of our Father in the wrong way, in their writings, and teaching of sinful things, they are people to whom Elohim means nothing, by hiding, and denying, the renewed spiritual life with our Father, by us uniting back to Him, that is offered, and taught by our only spiritual teacher, the Master over it, our only true Master. Teacher, King, the Messiah, Yahushua. Omain and Omain. They were before of old ordained, to this condemnation, that means they were committed to their evil ways even back during the first earth age. They came from that first earth age, and they entered the world age of the flesh to change the very words of our Messiah. The word of our Father, Yahuwah is eternal, unchanging from age to age and these certain men that crept in unawares, are the fallen ones, we call the Kenites, the sons of Cain, the union that took place, between Eve and Har Satan in the Garden of Eden, where she bare Cain, the bad seed, and his offspring, including them are living in the world, even today. This is addressing Har Satan's evil followers that are born in the flesh, from the old earth that then was, too Peter explains the three earth ages of time. In the first earth age, one third of the population at that time followed after Ha-Satun, and these evil souls are born into the flesh earth age, meaning having a flesh body with a spirit body that is dead, and carrying a dead soul, as the second earth was recreated and replenished by Elohim. Now another little group of, copycat followers, we call them by that name because, they did the same thing their leader did to Eve in the Garden of Eden, where she gave birth to Cain, the earthly son of, Ha-Satun. These evil angels left their first estate, and came to earth, on a mission for him, 
the evil one, Ha Satan, to disrupt the order of events, which are to come to pass according to the word of Elohim. These men are the sons of Elohim, that we read of in Bereshith, Genesis 6, that came to earth to take in marriage the daughters of Adam. Now let us study. Bereshith, Genesis 6 verse 2, that the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The woman was under attack because it would be through woman of Adam that Yahushua, our Messiah would come, and that is why not only Satan, but his fallen angels would also continue to attack her, through the centuries. This is why the saying, Eve the mother of all living, in Bereshit 3 verse 20. Through Eve came the Messiah, in a future generation, and if we do not have him, we do not have rebirth of life itself in the spirit, the spiritual life that reunites us to our father and his kingdom, which can only come through his son. Our only spiritual teacher and the master over it, our only true master, teacher, king, the Messiah, Yahushua, forever and forever, ha amen. For you Uda, Jude, will speak of them shortly to the new believers that are coming into the kingdom here on the earth. All of these fallen angels will be coming back very shortly when Michael casts Ha-Satan out upon the earth for the great tribulation, also called the great deception. These fallen angels are spoken of in Hatson, Revelations 11, verse 13 and 14. And in that hour occurred a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and there were killed in the earthquake, Shivatilifim, seven thousand, names of men, and the rest became afraid and gave covered, glory, to Elohi, Elohim, Ha Shemaim. Shemaim means heaven and earth, also Elohim of heaven, the root word is Shomai. Are the hearers, of the word of Elohim? Those are his elect, that yelled out in glory of his name. Hail to Yahuwah, because they are the, hears of his inspired word. When seven thousand of them will be killed in the streets of Jerusalem, just as seventh trumpet is sounding and our master, teacher, king, the Messiah, Yahushua, returns. Elohim is fair in all things, and these angels, their souls received condemnation, because they would not listen to instructions of Elohim, as they void the word, his living Torah, of Yahuwah. We are not speaking of evil spirits here, but actual angels, Nephilim. The fallen angels, O main. Verse 14, the second woe passed. Hainai, behold. The third woe is coming quickly. In the English, and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the Elohim of heaven. Within meaning less than an hour, the earthquake that is going to split, the Mount of Olives, will take place. A pathway will be made for the children of our master, teacher, king, the Messiah, Yahushua, in order for them to get to him afterwards. Why would Yahuwa kill seven thousand men at this moment? These are the angels of Satan, that will die at this time, all of them. They are the men, that Elohim will kill. Satan's time for his storytelling lies are over, and all those fallen angels helping him will be destroyed. The remnant that is election of Elohim will give glory and praise to Yahuwah, our Father because it is all over. The tribulation, the testing, these flesh bodies, and this earth age of the flesh will be over. My friends, this event is a matter of just a very few years away, for we are living in the final days that are coming. Verse 14, the second woe is past, and, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Remember that the first woe, at the sixth trumpet, was with the coming of Satan, and all his locust army to seduce the entire earth, in this book of Yohanan, John's visions, Revelation chapter 9. The first woe ended with their massive appearance on the earth that cause the peoples of the earth to worship Ha Satan, as the Messiah. The third woe comes with the seventh trumpet. All prophecy in the entire Bible dealing with the seventh, and last trumpet happens instantly at this time. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms, of the kingdom of Ayahuwah, and of Ben, his son, 
Yahushua, the Moshiach, Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever, ha Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 5. Now I wish to remind you, though you are fully informed, that Yahuwah, who once saved a people from Etz Mitzrayim, Egypt, afterwards destroyed every Apicurus, not having Emuna, faith. The word, Apicurus, is a noun. A term designating a person who leaves the Hebrew teachings, also, a skeptic regarding the basic articles of faith, as taught by Yahushua, the Messiah in the English. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Elohim, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Jude is now warning us about how important it is to remain in the faith, that was given to us through our master, teacher, king, and our only messiah, Yahushua, as he instructed and promised us, that the comforter will come, his Holy Spirit, Ruach Emet the spirit of truth, that will teach us all things, so we won't be confused, as to what has been taught to them through these synagogues of Satan, these death houses, in this world, that destroy your souls. Therefore we read earlier, that the scriptures have been twisted by these evil men, corrupted with their lies, and we will need his harsh radorbar, his inspired word through his Ruach Kodesh. Holy Spirit and his Ruach Emet, spirit of truth to prevent us from falling into the hands of Ha-Satan, as the people of Mitzrayim did and afterwards were destroyed? For Elohim, wiped out an entire generation in the wilderness because of their foolishness and idolatry. Omain. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 6. About the Malashim, his angels not being content to keep their positions of Memshela, means a place to rule from, in their own dominion, having deserted their own station, these Malashim, angels, are now kept, Shasherot, meaning, in chains, Oifibic, forever, under, Kilshik, means darkness, for the Mispet HaYom HaGadol, meaning the judgment of the great day, the Yom HaDin, the day of judgment. Now let us look at the word, Kilshik, is a noun, means dark, darkness and obscurity. As silence in darkness they remain. In the English. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. In many ancient cultures, people used the term heaven to describe three different realms, the sky, outer space and then a spiritual heaven. Saul, Paul was saying that Elohim took him to the third heaven, the spiritual heaven, the realm beyond the physical universe where Elohim dwells. The only habitation for any angel is heaven, unless directed by Yahuwah to come to the earth, and in their defiance of Elohim, they left heaven and came to this earth. Habitation in the Hebrew is, moron, in the Greek is, oiketerion, a place or residence a dwelling place and habitation, as to where they belong, and told to remain there, a direct command, their first estate, as to watch, and report directly to Elohim. Now they took that upon themselves to break a direct command by going against Elohim, for the sole purpose to seduce the woman on the earth born of the flesh. In order to corrupt the bloodline going to Yahushua. This was their crime they committed, after they left their first estate. Yahushua said, He has given us the power over serpents, snakes and devils, that is all of Ha-Satan's followers, his Kenites, his fallen angels and even his fake ministers. We also have power over demons, which are spirits, of the evil that dwell on the earth today, looking to enter a living flesh vessel of man, these evil spirits, are their abomination, that mocked Elohim's creation of man with these created freaks of nature, hybrids, of the Nephilim, as to the results of the fallen angels mating with flesh daughters of Adam. Their offsprings are flesh-like bodies, that were destroyed by the flood at Noah. Noah's time, but their evil spirits, remain here, roaming the earth, for they are not part of Elohim's creation, or property, for they don't come from him, O main.
Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 7. Astam and Amorah and the cities around them, Inidoi I'm, similar, manner to these, indulging in, Giluyareot, in sexual immorality, against the course of nature and turning aside, and going after alien flesh, are set forth to lie in public view as a mofit, example, undergoing their, Oneshevish Olam, the eternal fire. In English, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them, in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Sodom and Gomorrah, are like the falling angels, with their unnatural acts, breaking through the bounds of the law, which Elohim had set. Strange, meaning other flesh as is given here, means giving yourself to flesh that is other than being natural. Like, man with man, and woman with woman. This is what this verse is speaking about, and the sin is punishable, to be put to death, according to the Torah of Elohim, and at one time even in civil laws as well. The example as used here, is Daimar, meaning person to be shown in public view, as an example for what they did, the act of sodomy and fornication. But in this world of Hasatun, their marriages are featured in the press and on TV. What Yahuwah is telling us what he thinks of all this sodomy, and other forms of fornication, that has become so common today, and promoted by our perverted politicians and judges, what they call, the same-sex marriages, which says it all. But it is only evil, in the eyes of our Elohim, and he will never unite these two in holy marriage, but Hasatun will. As you cross over into darkness into his hands. So beware citizens of these United States, for we are no longer protected by the light, of Elohim, for this abomination, and by following along with our evil leaders, for they have removed Elohim and his laws from the lands years ago, and this final action, on behalf of them, has only put the final nail, in the coffin, that is filled up, with the dead souls of them. And we say, woe, to this country, that uses this license of sodomy and fornication to obtain power, and votes, but will only result in its downfall, to the Kenites, Zionists, that will now take full control of your lives and all your family members, in their one world system of control and order, O main. This is written of in 2 Kepha, Peter 2 verse 1 to 8, showing us that these fallen angels once again had again slipped in, as they did before in the time of Noah, to corrupt the minds of the people. These fallen angels perverted, their zakak zorkak, meaning to be pure and clean, both morally and spiritually in the plan of the salvation, created by our father, the Tahar, pure and clean, the Kordosh one, Yahuwah. So to understand how is shall be very shortly, all we have to do is go back and understand what they did before in the other times they came to earth. My friends, they are coming again, at the sixth trumpet sounding, so beware, and you will see them and all the filth that they bring with them. You will either know it before time, and expect to see it come to pass as written in his inspired word, or you will be part of it, because as it is written in Hazan, visions to come, Revelation 9 verse 4, Yahuwah will turn you over to them, if you are not sealed in your mind with the truth of his inspired word. Now let us recall again for it is very important for you to know. My friends, they left their first place of habitation, or residence because they were perverted. They wanted to destroy the woman, that would bear the children, and even the promised Messiah that would come through the seed of her. We saw in the beginning. Beresheth, Genesis 6 tells us only one family remained clean and pure, that was Noah. Noah and his family were not influenced by these fallen angels and that is the reason for Yahuwah, destroying the entire population of those hybrids. It is through that one family of Noah that Messiah then would come. Keep in mind, once again, what we consider as evil spirits and these fallen angels are two different things. Yet it is the offspring or progeny of these fallen angels that were destroyed, and their spirits are the evil spirits of this age. When the fallen angels return they will not come in spirit form but appear much as the image of man, for we are created in their image.
Those evil spirits are the familiar spirits of the old covenant, and the spirits of divination meaning to foresee to uncover hidden knowledge with the occult, which involves fortune telling or soothsaying, as it was once called, spoken of in the renewed covenant, as well, O main. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 8. Likewise, indeed, these meaning those certain men, these dreamers, on the one hand, pollute the bazaar, the flesh, on the other hand, they do not recognize Harmem Shela, meaning, the rule, of glorious heavenly beings, instead, they speak Lish and horror, meaning evil speech as to what they say, with Chilil Hashem, meaning by the desecration of his name, railing against them. These certain men here are those who crept in unawares of verse 4. In the English, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. The men and women that are under the influence of these fallen angels, and evil spirits meaning the souls of them that rebelled during the first earth age, that are born into this flesh age, the bad seed belonging to Hasatun. They speak continually of matters that defile the flesh, and the precious binding force between man and wife, male and female. They tear down the bonds of marriage, and despise everything that is holy and part of the dominion of Yahushua our Messiah. This includes all those who call themselves Christians, that claim the name of their Christ, his word, and most of all the sacrifice that he made on the cross for their salvation. They have certainly been brainwashed by Hasat Tun and his ministers of darkness, as to the real Emet, truth of the core Dosh One, our blessed Elohim. There is nothing holy and precious to those filthy dreamers, and when men and women promote what is known to be against his Torah, they have allowed their minds to be turned over to these evil spirits, to only become a mouthpiece for Satan himself. Their mouth will give them away, and when you have identified them, you will know them for who they really are, for most of these Kenites are perverted, as well as Hasatun, himself, as his fallen angels, and those that are possessed with these evil spirits, will show similar signs. Perverted individuals do become filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, they despise all things that pertain to our Great One, Teacher, King and Messiah, for they all belong to Hasatun. Today their mission is to the promotion of their filthy acts of sodomy, by making light and nullifying, the holy bonds of matrimony, attacks on children, and turning our Torah into fairy tales, even with their movies they produce, with false doctrines and teachings. They have accepted the doctrines of evil men, in these temples of doom, from their own ministers of darkness, as being the words of their Bible, and certainly not the true inspired words of Elohim. It comes by them twisting and even covering up by changing the inspired words themselves, as we covered earlier, from the very beginning. O main. Today the filthy act of sodomy, homosexual acts, is being called a different lifestyle, and is well accepted by the top leaders of the lands, and even in many of their church houses of death that only rob their souls. My friends, it is of the devil, and all those that promote it, have given their minds and souls over to the evil one, Hasatun. Now for Kephobet, 2 Peter 2 verse 9 to 14, that covers it all. Hebrew to English full translation. For the King James Bible destroys its truth, and we will use this method of translation, from now on in our study. Omain. The Master, Yahuwah, knows how to deliver, the Shabbat guarding, pious ones out of trials, and to reserve the unjust, until Yom Hadin, Day of Judgment, to be punished. Verse 10, But most of those that walk after the flesh, in lust of uncleanness, and despise the government. Presumptuous are they, self-willing, they are not afraid to speak evil of the honored. Verse 11, Whereas heavenly Malashim, the angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not slanderous accusations against them, before Yahuwah, verse 12, but these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken, and destroyed, speak evil of things, that they understand not, shall utterly perish, in their own corruption. Verse 13, and shall receive their rewards, of unrighteousness, as they counted pleasure 
to indulge in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, mitzvoth, with their own act of Torah disobedience, by themselves with their own deceptions, while they celebrate their moeds, the feast and appointed times, with you, verse 14, having eyes of adultery, they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable beings, having a lev, heart of greed, they have exercised, covetous practices. The children under the curse. Ha are mine. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 9. Yet Michael, the chief Malash, when contending with Satan, about the body of Moshe, did not bring against the body him a railing accusation. The archangel Michael himself was doing battle with the devil, and he was a mighty powerful angel, yet he would not stop to discuss, or argue anything with Ha Satan, the devil. Yahuwah is telling us don't waste the time in arguing with Ha Satan, or you will lose the argument. For he is ten times wiser than, Dornayel, Daniel, and, Dornayel, was the wisest man in the world of his day. Satan and his fallen angels are deceitful, supernatural, and they have knowledge that is forbidden, to us as human beings, in the flesh. The nature of the flesh is a test of our choosing between Yahuwah our father and Satan. So don't get caught in his trap, we are not to argue nor debate either. My friends, your simple action on your part, with Satan will lose to him every time, while in your flesh body, so don't even try. Satan knows the scripture from cover to cover, and all of the scripture is fresh in his mind. His nature is to, add words and take some away to twist the original meanings, of our father and his son, in his inspired word, by our Elohim to us. All human beings are born of the flesh, we walk the earth just a short time, and our minds will allow a limited amount of knowledge and common sense to comprehend. Satan and his fallen angels have evil spirits and have been around continually, not only in this second age, but also in the first, where they were all created. They are supernatural beings, and they are set in their minds to pervert you, and everything that you touch. They are the ones that trip you up, and accuse you to follow their instructions and sin. It is all part of the plan, of our Father, that all souls would enter this world age, through the womb of woman, innocent of the world that then was, and have the opportunity of a fresh new start, in the flesh, of this present earth age. Then each individual would have the choice to make their own mind up whether they would follow the father, or his enemy and his filthy angels. Don't forget one third did in the past by following after Ha Satan, one third didn't care, and one third couldn't make up their minds. For only a selective few, stood firm for the truth of Elohim, both the father and his son. That is what he calls, our free will, however there are some that took a stand in the world that then was and they were judged then, and they are the ones that are called the elect. Though Elohim, will not interfere in your right to choose him or Satan, but he will interfere in the lives of the elect, just as he did with Saul, Paul on the road to Damascus. Now Satan, argued over the body of Moshe, Moses because, Moshe, is the lawgiver. Law and the commandments are despised by Satan, his fallen angels, and all his demons in the world. We know when Satan tried to argue over how, and by what manner Moshe, body was buried, Michael didn't argue, he just stated, Yahuwah rebuke thee. The father allowed nobody to know, not even Michael. But was seen later on, on the Mount of Transfiguration with Eliyahu, Elijah. Now if the dead don't immediately go to heaven, how did Moshe, and Elijah appear at the Transfiguration? Some people have left the earth without dying, and therefore are not in need of a resurrection. For they were both given a new spiritual body, for flesh and blood cannot enter the spiritual kingdom of Yahuwah. Both Moshe, and Eliyahu, each fit the bill, for the word is both the law with prophecy, complete and is forever living. The story recorded in 2, Melachim, Kings 2, tells us unmistakably that Eliyahu, was taken to heaven without first dying, verse 11, specifically, says he was caught in a heavenly whirlwind, and taken to heaven in sight of, 
Elisha, his successor. For that reason, they both appeared with Yahushua during the transfiguration, for all were transfigured, changed in outward form or appearance, transformed into their new spiritual bodies, being part of the selective elect, from the first age, confirmed by Yahushua himself, for he was also transformed, into his spiritual body, many years later, with them both, O main. But, the main point in this verse, is that we are not to argue with Satan, nor any of his angels, including his Kenites, means his ministers, nor any evil spirit over any part of the scriptures. My friends, the Bible is firm and unchangeable. If there is confusion in the word, that confusion is in your own mind, or the translation is not from the original text of the manuscripts. To argue in any manner is to turn yourself over to Ha Satan. Just rebuke him as Michael did, and move on. My friends, we are not equipped to argue with Ha Satan and his angels and that is why we are to turn it over to our father, by saying Yahuwah rebuke thee Satan, O main. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things that they do not know, but what they know naturally, not natural but as unnatural, strange flesh, abomination, as unreasoning beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves with each other. They know nothing of Elohim, the blood of Yahushua, Hamoshayach, or the dignities of the word, yet what they say is corrupt. They pervert everything that they touch. They teach perversion and will put perversion in the minds of those that will allow it. They take the things that Harmoshiach, gives freely into something that has to be earned, and when trying to earn those gifts, they will take you to hell with Ha Satan. O Main. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 11. Woe to them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, Cain, and ran with greed after delusion of Balaam, Balaam, for reward and perish in the rebellion of Korak, Kori. To understand who Cain, Cain was, and one need to know the parable of the fig tree, it is to understand what really happened in the Garden of Eden, between Eve and Saturn. There was a sexual union that took place, and from that union came Cain, the first child. The offspring of Cain are called the Kenites, a nation of them are in the world today. Now the Kenites, took the laws and commandments, of Elohim, for they hated him and everything he stood for, they are our true enemy, of everything that is good, of our father and his children, and by changing his inspired word, into their own traditions, that are full of lies, that make void the words of our father, Yahuwah in the sight of his children. Also, the way of Cain, and the Kenites are to do everything for money and gain wealth, for their one world order. They worship money and the things of Elohim are just a tool, for the gaining of more money, for the building up of their one world system of evil control. Then they pervert everything, they touch, and change it, to distort the true meanings, to deceive them in the world, in order to capture more souls for their father, Ha Satan, for this is a spiritual warfare taking place, for souls. The robbers are his teachers, preachers and ministers, in those churches of doom, these death houses, today in the world. Now for the old man, Balaam, who we believe was really a prophet, for Ha Satan, and not Elohim, for he loved money. A prophet for hire, for money, you pay him, and he will preach just about anything you want him to say. He worked for the other side and corrupted the minds of many believers, that is why, we call him a prophet for Satan and not Elohim. Like so many of these traveling prophets, that come from afar, to preach at your location, for the money, especially in these end days. Here our father, used this man's own donkey to speak to him, one day as he was traveling to another location. Elohim will use whatever it takes to get your attention, like even this ass, to get the job done. In Hebrew is Korak. Ankara, is the same man called Kori, who can be found in the book of Bimidbar. Numbers, chapter 16, verse 1. Where Kori went up to Moshe, and said, You take too much on yourself. For telling us what to do. 
for we also are Levites and can take care of ourselves, and don't need you telling us what to do. This is the beginning of division in the camp of Moshe. Then Moshe, said to Kori, you better be careful for my instructions come from Yahuwah, and I follow them. So then Elohim told Moshe, to separate from them, and get them away from you, because I am going to destroy them. So then draw a line on the ground, so then Moshe, said to the people. If you are with Kori then get over on that side of that line. And those that want to follow me, stay on this side of the line. So the people separated themselves and stood with the man of their choosing. At that moment, came a great earthquake from Elohim, and the ground cracked open like an egg, and consumed all of them, Cory and his people were destroyed and buried at the same time, gone forever, in a flash. Because they gave Elohim's servant a hard time. So then, be careful my friends, for we are in the end times, and Elohim is watching over us for he is in total control, and it is very dangerous to be a gainsayer, as you can see, against the word and the instructions, of our Elohim. Amen. Now here is some knowledge. Now to clear a very important point about Kori, is the same as, Kura, that was born the son of Esau, another enemy of Elohim, and the mother was an Hittite, meaning Kenite blood, as recorded in Bejith. Genesis 36, verse 1 to 5. Korah, was the father of the Korahites, and became a priestly people. They were not of Elohim, but they mixed with the children of Israel, and the priesthood of Aaron, from the time in the wilderness, and the problem with these priests, or men of Korah, is that they take the things of Elohim, and change it, to pervert it from the truth. So then Kor lied, for he was not of the tribe of Levi but a mixed breed Kenite, and Jude is telling us, that these fallen angels will take up the same path as those ancient Korahites, did, in creating their own forms of religion, and not the ways of Elohim. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 12. These are rocky reefs in Yomodim, appointed times of Ahava, love, to Yahuwah, when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without mayhem, water, carried about by the winds, eatsim, trees whose fruit decay, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. The spirit of slumber, rages on and on, my friends. Now these are spots in your feasts of charity, meaning when they come, next to you, in the name of love, saying we love you, only to gain your attention and respect. These evil ones, including the Kenites today, and the fallen angels when they arrive are like clouds without water, they are empty inside, and with only the power that you grant to them. These spirits are of no form, and they are blown about with every wind of doctrine that flows. Whatever you can think of in your mind, they will assist you in believing it, as being true. Yet when the truth is sought, they become like the leaves, and fruit on that fig tree, that bared no fruit that withered away and died, as spoken by Yahushua, HaMoshayach, in Matthew, Matthew 21, verse 19 to 21. They are barren, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, think on what this is saying. Twice dead means, both their spiritually body and soul, for they were sentenced to death in the first earth age, at the rebellion by HaSatan. Then again in Beershith. Genesis 6 When these fallen angels left the first realm, to come to earth against Elohim's will and his command, they were sentenced again to death, that will come just before the end of this earth age. For these angels have twice received the sentence of death, placed upon both their spiritual bodies and their spiritual souls. This judgment will come when Elohim brings this earth age to end, and we enter into the millennium age. The spots that work into your feasts, are those spots that work into your studying of Elohim's word, that hide his spiritual and living truth with full understanding, from all them in the world. Those spots are all the lies of distortions being taught, not belonging to the Torah of life. Yes common salvation is a beautiful thing to teach, with the proper understanding, which most in the world do not comprehend, or teach. For once that soul is saved, 
meaning to be born from above, the reunion and rejointing, as to be joined together once again, the spirit carrying the soul, spirit to spirit, being reunited with our father, who is a living spirit, once again, meaning all of Yahuwah, our spiritual father and his kingdom. For his kingdom has come within you, this blessed day, hallelujah, 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 Amen. Now to include his only begotten son, Yahushua, as they all live, within you, his full kingdom, is now back within your physical body, as a living spirit, as Adam was first created with a living spiritual body carrying his soul. That brings everlasting life to your spirit body, and also life to the flesh, but all flesh shall die, and return back to the ground. And your soul, within the spirit body goes back to your father, O main. Now if you are born from above, the full kingdom of Elohim is within your spirit body. You will not find him in any building made by the hands of men. As most in the world go to, for they are misled and deceived by evil men in order to destroy and kill your souls. Now the begotten son, Yahushua, means one of its kind, that has a specific relationship with the father, Yahuwah, sharing in the same divine nature. His covenant son, as Isaac was to Abraham, as the living sacrifice of mankind, to come as promised, through his love, and not by the works of any man, as he unites us back to the father and his kingdom. Amen. Now it is time for the real meat, of his word. For the spirit of Israel, meaning the twelve tribes, are nearly dead on that milk today, as Yahushua taught us, it is now time for real meat, solid food, to bring spiritual life, back to that body. My friends, in order to survive to what is coming upon this whole world. Now is the time for tomorrow may be too late, so then we pray that you begin your studying with new understanding, his entire word, word by word, page by page, book by book, as his comforter, his Holy Spirit, directs and leads you together, in Ecard, in oneness, O main. Let us cover, this important verse in, Lucas, Luke, 8, verse 55. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. If her Uruk returned, then where was it? Her spirit body was with our father, telling us her spirit body, that carries her soul, was not here on the earth, but with the father, for she was dead in her spirit and body. When she rose again, from her death, and made whole, her spiritual body with her soul, returned and united in her physical body, what we call, being born from above, given life once again, to her spirit, by our Father, the Creator and Saver of souls, then Yahushua, commanded that she was to be given meat, and not just milk, to eat. The milk of the word is salvation and baptism, that is what is given to newborn believers, but when to mature in the spirit, is not on milk, but on the meat of his inspired living word. The only thing spiritually that will sustain this young woman's spirit soul, is meat, and that is the only thing that will keep you alive in his word, is his solid food, that feeds the spirit body that carries your soul. The girl had been born twelve years ago, and she is revived here, from her death, and lived again. Only the Messiah can perform this miracle, for she was once alive, died and now lived, again for her spirit body carrying her soul, is the life source of the soul as well as the body itself, is born, once again, given life from above, by uniting and connecting her back, to her spiritual father and his kingdom, Yahuwah, after the two downfalls of man, one being the rebellion of Satan, where most of the population went with him, on earth that then was, and later on the present earth, the sin in the garden of Adam and Eve, against Elohim, by following after Ha Satan, where the father disconnected himself, from all of mankind, leaving a void, a dead spirit behind. For only the father brings life back to the spirit, now, through his begotten, son, Yahushua, Ha Moshiach, Omein. Now let us look at the twelve tribes of Israel today, for they are not alive, but spiritually dead. And when you go into these so-called church houses of death, 
These synagogues of hearts at ton, they intentionally keep you dead, by feeding you the lie, and just their sour milk to drink. They kill your soul and then starve you to death, from the real food, the meat of his truth, of the inspired living word of life itself. Sure they feed you, and tell you they are giving you milk, but is it sour to your soul, and then tell you to bring in your family members and friends to experience his salvation and baptism, why because they need your money, and your special donations towards their one world order, and don't forget to make a special donation for Israel. Yes Israel, the ones, that occupy that land today, who claim they are Jews, but are not. For they are not our brother, Judah. And don't belong to our household, of Israel. They are Kenites, or better yet, known as Zionists, that run and control that country, called Israel today. But, if given, the meat of his inspired living word, will only expose them, for who they really are, by masquerading as someone they are not. These fakes, with their corrupted Bibles, as well as their fake, phony and imposter, Elohim, who is only Ha-Satan, disguising himself, and playing that role, as the Lamb of Elohim. That does not prepare you for these end times, by enlightening you, as to who they really are. For if they did, you would realize, and wake up to his truth, and get out immediately from these death houses and temples of Ha-Satan, O Main. This should remind us of Amos 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Yahuwah our Elohim, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Yahuwah. The famine that is going on around us, is for not hearing the truth of his inspired word itself. The people are starving for his truth, and it is not given to them, by these temples of doom. For it is still made available to you directly by Elohim in the world, today. But there is a time coming, my friends, when no one will ever hear, again his inspired words in this world. They will be cut off to mankind, for his clock is running, so one better study it now, before time runs out. So without hearing the word, then how can they become doers of his truth? As we just covered, in their spirit bodies, which carry their souls, are dead, to it. And they will certainly not, hear it, in those death houses of Ha-Satan. Now then, there can be no faith without first hearing his inspired living word. Taught by only him, through his Ruach, Kordosh, his Holy Spirit. Not as the world teaches, about the Elohim of this world, who is only Ha-Satan. For the Father is a living spirit and he is talking about spiritual things. And the meanings of such, pertaining to spiritual matters, that are going to take place here on the earth, and in the heavens, as well, where the physical mind cannot comprehend, or understand his meanings. Unless it is united with the mind of Elohim, as one, and made whole, and complete once again. Spiritual matters require spiritual understanding otherwise you will never see his light. Therefore, one needs to be born from above, in their spirit, once again, as we just covered, in order to understand, and see the kingdom of Elohim. A Pharisee, and a member of the Sanhedrin, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, in Johannan, John 3 verse 3, came to the Rebbe at night, led by the moon, meaning ha Satan, and said unto him, Rebbe, we all know that you are a teacher, that has come from Elohim, for no man can ever do these miracles, that you have done, except Elohim be with you. Nicodemus, name means victory of the people. Being a Pharisee, he believed in life after death, a member of the Sanhedrin, only a bunch of Kenites, consisting of seventy men of wealth, an assembly and council, where most were Sadducees, didn't believe in life after death. They acted as judges over religious and domestic affairs, of Jerusalem at that time. These are the same evil ones, that judged to have Yahushua killed. Nicodemus appears three times in the Gospel of Yohanan. He first visits Yahushua, one night to discuss his teachings. Yohanan 3 verse 1 to 21, 
The second time he is mentioned, he reminds his colleagues in the Sanhedrin, that the law requires that a person, Yahushua, be heard before being judged, Yohanan 7 verse 50 to 51, finally, Nicodemus appears after the crucifixion, to provide the customary embalming spices, and assists Joseph of Arimathea in preparing the body of the Messiah for burial, Yohanan 19, verse 39 to 42. Yahushua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Yohanan 3 verse 3 to 5. Therefore one has to be spiritually inspired, first, born from above, your spirit that was dead but now alive. In order to understand his living word. And you have to prove to the father, that you are a worthy student of learning, by putting in your time, to study and learn his word as he teaches you, his inspired living word, that gives life to your spirit, as it grows, and gets stronger in the faith, O main. Now for some serious conversation, my friends, from the heart. You must learn as it was first written, study each and every word, by digging deep to find the real gems of knowledge, and then you will discover that, every book has the same message of truth. The elect of Elohim, were always considered the outsiders, to them in the world, their warning messages were heard, but never received, and even after calamity came, to them in the world, they still did not believe in their truth, as these special people of Elohim, preached to them, as they were instructed, by our Father, these chosen few, that truly loved him. Now only those that believed overcame. What the world was offering at that time. For they saw the big picture, and realized the ultimate truth, which is not foreseen in this world, but the world to come. Now the old covenant teaches us about the prophets of Elohim and all things to come in the near future of time, including the new son of man, which is the son of Yahuwah, and he shall be our king and Messiah, also tells us about a better covenant to come, the renewed one of the past, that will teach us all about those things that were once prophesied have become reality, in our space of time, including the birth and resurrection of Yahushua and how Hasat Tun and his children are defeated, as he is thrown, into the pit during the millennium age, and released for a short period, to only to be thrown in the lake of fire, with others souls that served him, after the great judgment day, where all evil souls are done away with, and then on into eternity, with our loving father, and our beloved Yahushua, and the rest of his Kordosh ones, the children of his kingdom, Omain. Now for you alone, must rightly stand on his word of truth, before our loving and forgiving father, Yahuwah, and to believe in his son, Yahushua, the true Messiah, your only saviour, in all things he represents and teaches us, in order to be a true follower, with full understanding as he taught us, the children of his faith, the mysteries throughout the ages of time, that are hidden to most in the world, and then be sealed with this knowledge given to you by his Ruach, Kordosh, his Holy Spirit, and be saved from all the rest of them, as to what is coming upon them, in these latter days. For he loves you, and will never forsake you, and is coming for you, to honor you, as a good and faithful servant, with your crown of victory, for you have only chosen him, over Satan, as most in the world have followed this evil one, the wrong one in their blindness, but you are very special to him, and will join the king of kings, in his kingdom of everlasting life, forever and ever, with them, the father, Yahuwah, and his ben, son, Yahushua, ha Moshiach, ha Amin. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering Kokavin, stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness lo alarm ved, forever to eternity. While waves of the sea, foaming up their evil deeds, like wandering stars, the falling angels that are killed just before the seventh trumpet sounds, in hats on chapter 11, for whom their darkness and gloom has been reserved forever. Like a heavy storm, the waves are forever coming over and over again, with great force and will come quickly, as they crash over the rocks and shoreline, 
and eventually are broken down and eroded away. That is how the waves of doctrine of these evil people will come, and they will cause an uproar, both mentally and physically. So then, my friends be on the watch for them, in the name of their Elohim, who is only Ha Satan, the fake and imposter. These words that come out of their mouths will sound out their own shame, as they have no respect for the true meaning of Elohim's Kordosh word. The Prince of the Night, is none other than Ha Satan himself, and his words that these people utter, is as black and dark, as he is, this evil one. The results of their words, are the same as what will be done to Ha Satan in the very end. Omain. These wandering stars, are talked about in Hatson, Revelation 12, verse 4, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is Satan's tail was on the earth that then was, the first earth age, and this is the time of his rebellion against Elohim. One third of the population, stars, the children of Elohim, were captured and joined the forces of Ha-Satan, this is why these fallen angels were sentenced, to their first death. A third part of the stars of heaven were the third part of all souls of Elohim's children. Now these souls, as well as the remaining two thirds, will be placed into flesh bodies and to be born through the water's sack, in the womb, of the woman, in the flesh, as the earth was replenished. Bereshith 1 verse 2. After the great flood of the earth that then was, Bereshith 1 verse 1. Where the earth at that time, was totally submerged into the water, as the water canopy burst wide open, where no one survived, that disaster. Now, the present earth, as the souls of children of Elohim, were come to this earth, Hasat Tun stood by deceiving Eve, from the very beginning to destroy the lineage of the family that Yahushua, ha Moshiach, would be born. That bloodline was promised from Eve in the garden, in Bereshith, 3, 15, to Sarah, the wife of Abraham, and to the virgin Marian who brought forth a child, and called his name Emmanuel, is I Yahushua, for he shall save his people from their sins. This plan of common salvation did not start in this earth age, but in the age that then was at the very time of the fall of those wandering stars. ha Satan has always tried to cause man's fall. And has been very successful in deceiving them, because they are blind to his inspired word, and too lazy to study, some don't really care, and others are standing on the sidelines, waiting to see the outcome, in the end, when it is only too late then for them. Yehuda, Jude 1 verse 14. And Chanak, is Enoch, also being the seventh from Adam, Adom, prophesied of these, saying Behold, the Adonai, the Master, Elohim comes with ten thousand of his Yisrael, Israel Kaidoshim, saints. Enoch was another one that was translated by Elohim to the heavens directly, now before the great flood of Noah, that took place on this present earth, the flesh age of man where he told the people at that time, don't mix with these fallen angels, they are forbidden, they are unnatural, and no one would listen to him. In Bereshith 6, Noach, and his family would be the only ones that listened. For his family were pure bloods, meaning never mixing with these falling angels, so then from umbilical cord to umbilical cord being unblemished right to the birth of Yahushua, ha Moshiach, Omain. Now in Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, tells us that Yahushua, is coming with his angels at the seventh trumpet sounding, to square things away, and put things in order. Did you know that Enoch was a preacher? For that is what his name means preacher. And his Hebrew name is, Kornak, meaning dedicated. For he was totally devoted to his task and purpose for his heavenly father, Yahuwah having a single-minded loyalty and integrity to his Elohim. Saying, Hinne, behold, the Adonai, Elohim cometh with ten thousands of his, Kordosh, separated ones, from all the rest, Kaddish, his saints. This is as it will be when Yahushua, HaMoshiach, 
comes as Melacha, Melashim, and Adon, Adnim, at the sound of the seventh trumpet. Harmoshayach will come with a staff, rod of iron, and that means that there is going to be discipline in his kingdom. Even though this is also recorded in the book of Kornak. Meaning the book of Enoch is not canonized by these evil men in the world, nor is it set aside as scripture to be studied, but certainly mentioned in Yahuwah's inspired living word, for Kornak, Enoch was loved by Elohim, for he never did experience physical death, and was taken by him, into his kingdom. Omain. Today there are two books of Enoch that are in print, and one is a fake. That is why you must be careful what you take from that book as being the truth. The Coptic, also called the Ethiopian, is the oldest considered the most accurate, however the Slavic is considered the most popular. Even so it is in his word and itself declares these massive number of saints will come to back to earth with Yahushua, Hamoshayach. Omain. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 15. To execute mispaid, judgment, upon all, and to convict all that are wicked among them of all their wicked deeds, which they have wickedly committed, and of all their harsh words which wicked sinners have spoken against him. So it has been done throughout the years, but it has gotten worse in this final generation. When you teach the real truth, his inspired word, it happens to the abominable thing, all people get mad and scream out, it is politically incorrect who cares? It's what morally correct, that really matters and counts. We don't wish to see anyone go to hell, we don't wish to see anyone burn, and we are so close we can smell the smoke, for Elohim is a consuming fire, it smells good. For he comes to earth to do judgment, and the world age of the flesh is over, every word that is uttered against Yahushua, and his children that is not true, and every deed that has been done against them will be accountable. When you da, Jude says all words, and all ungodly deeds, and all of the harsh acts against the elect of Elohim, all will be held accountable. My friends. This is directed to those that would act against each Mashiachim, his Talmidah, his disciples, that would plant seeds of truth, and be of service for the Rebbe, our great one, Yahushua. Keep in mind though that once a sin has been repented for in Yahushua. Hamoshayach, it is finished and over, and that is why we leave the vengeance up to him, for it is only Elohim that can know, the true intent of the heart of the sinner. When someone comes against you, as being in the service of Hamoshayach, it is not for you to carry out any vengeance, for Elohim will make all things right upon his return, if not sooner. Always remember that judgment has two sides, and on the ungodly side there is persecution while on the godly side judgment comes, means your rewards. It is Elohim that gives out, all judgment fairly. If you have faith in him, never be afraid of judgment, for in them comes blessings and rewards. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouths speaks proud words, being respecters of persons in order to seek gain. These, men, are malcontents and fault finders, walking according to their tavot, lusts, their mouth speaks arrogant things, flattering for that sill, purpose, of financial advantage. The men here are the ungodly ones, and they flatter the ones that do wrong, and bring accusations against those that do right. It sounds like the legal system of today where the victim is the accused, and the evil one gets all the rights and protection. This is exactly as things are happening today, when someone that cheats and is disrespectful but comes in first is looked up to, and those that do it Elohim's way and meet all their obligations are scorned. In the spiritual sense, good is becoming bad, and right is becoming wrong. The things that Elohim says in his word that he hates, are the very thing that the world today is promoting, such as sodomy, abortion, cheating, adultery, and so on. In fact if you teach his inspired word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, there are certain groups that will attack you, and many of them call themselves Christian, today. They are in ignorance of the overall plan of our father, Yahuwah, 
and his most precious living word, and it irritates them when he brings their false doctrines to light. We are not to attack them, but mark them well in your mind, and let Harmo Shayach, take care of them at his return. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 17. But, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before the Shlikim, apostles, of our master Yehushua, Harmo Shayach. Here we have to go back to the first three verses of this book of Yehuda. We are to go back to the very words of our great one, teacher, king, the Messiah, Yahushua, and the events that we should remember concerning the warnings of false men, and fallen angels, that crept in unawares into the very congregation themselves. Many who attend these churches in the world today, don't even know who these Kenites are, or what the parable of the fig tree is all about, nor that the fallen angels were here on earth, and will come again. Instead they teach in these temples of doom, things that turn men away from the truth of his word, and onto the false doctrines and traditions of these evil men. These so-called ministries today, with their denominations, have become a way for them to feed their own egos, and a way of gaining a lot of money, in the name of their false and fake Elohim. Amen. Now let us cover this subject matter about the traditions of men for better understanding and where they come from, in Melashim Bet. 2 Kings 3, verse 3. Nevertheless he cleaved unto the sins of Yarvam, Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was a member of the tribe of Ephraim, which made Yisrael, Israel to sin, he departed not from them. Now Jeroboam was the first king of the northern Israelite kingdom of Israel after the revolt of the ten northern Israelite tribes against, Rehoboam, who was a son of Solomon and a grandson of David. His mother was Nema, the Ammonite, that put an end to the united monarchy of the twelve tribes. Now Jeroboam reigned for twenty-two years. So when the idols of Baal, and the grove worship had been put away, Jeroboam brought back the worship of the two golden calves, following the death of his father, Nabat. Remember that when Jeroboam took the throne, the first thing that he did was to put a stop to the people of Israel, traveling to Jerusalem to worship at the house of Elohim, the temple, by making two golden calves. The people of the ten tribes were given this new religion, similar to what we call Christianity today. Here we have the basic foundation, as to what we call, the traditions of men, that are in these three forms of worship. A segment of each of them are still in practice, in these temples of doom today. Did you know, the words Lord and Master comes from Baal worship, and where all the people bowed to this image, except Elohim's elect of 7000. Then comes Grove and, Moloch, the fire, Elohim worship, where we have Ashtoreth, or Ashtaroth, mentioned twelve times in the Old Covenant, Testament, the fertility goddess, Moloch represented the male principle of life and reproduction, while Ashtoreth, represented the female principle of fertility. Weikra, Leviticus 18 verse 21 tells us. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy Elohim, I am Yahuwah. Now after 1450 years of Weikra, Leviticus, the Apostle Saul, Paul references pagan worship in Romim, Romans 1, verse 26 and 27, when he blasts the same kind of fertility goddess worship in the first century, taking place in the Church of Rome, with their Easter and Christmas, and other forms of adultery, as it is today, still continuing and carrying on in these church houses of Harsatun. One can readily see why Elohim and Moshe, Moses called these pagan religious practices and the sexual rights associated with it, abomination. Like homosexuality is a horrible, vile, abominable sin in the eyes of Elohim. Romim, 1, verse 24 to 32. The Bible condemns homosexuality in all its form as disgusting and evil. It is against nature and a perverted lifestyle of degradation and debauchery. Elohim created Adam and Eve not Adam and Steve. Anyone who attempts to legitimize homosexuality is the enemy of Elohim, 
as stated in Jacob, James 4 verse 4. One may question that those ancient enemies of Israel were as evil as the Bible claims that they were, but even a superficial glance at Canaanite religion, which begins with the son of Ham, having sex with his own mother, giving birth to Canaan, that Noah threw off his sacred mountain, this freak with half-breed blood, those of Kenite and the fallen angels, alone ably demonstrates their iniquity. Base sex worship was prevalent, and religious prostitution even commanded, human sacrifice was common, and it was a frequent practice, in an effort to placate their gods, to kill young children and bury them in the foundations of a house or public building at the time of construction. Yehoshua, Joshua 6 verse 26, In his days did he heal, the Bethlight, build Jericho, he laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn. Elohim, doesn't like substituting any form of man's traditions or idols to be placed before him and his ways. It doesn't matter how fancy and religious the temples and idols appear to be, Elohim, doesn't like it, my friends, and is going to do something about it. Also, to include, are the tribes of Ephraim, who are the Christian nations, in the world today, who don't know the song of Moshe, Moses, our victory song we sing, when the seventh trumpet sounds, with the return, of Yahushua, Ha Moshiach, because they break the fourth commandment. As stated in Shemoth, Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. To remember the Sabbath day, to keep it separated from other days. Six days shalt thou work, and do all thy work but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah, and to be keep for all generations. Continuing and including into the millennium, of the Messiah, and then into eternity. My friends, so there you have it, and you know where you stand, before your Elohim, in this world today. Now is the right time to clean up your acts of evil, and repent, before our Father takes his big broom and cleans off, all this evil in his sight, right here on his earth, just before, this age of the flesh ends. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 18. How that they have told you, there would be mockers in the Yamim, Ukaronim, the latter days, the end days, who would walk after their own wicked lusts. You know where that is written? In 2nd, Kepha. Peter where he talks about the three earth ages in time, in chapter 3 verse 1. This is now, beloved ones, the second letter I write to you, in which I stir up your sincere minds, to remember. Verse 2, the words previously spoken by the Kodesh and Ebilim, the separated ones, the prophets of Elohim, and of the command of the Adon, and Saviour, by your emissaries. Verse 3, knowing this first, that mockers shall come in the last days with mocking, walking according to their own lust, verse 4, and saying where is the promise of his coming? For since their fathers fell asleep, all continues as from the beginning of creation. Verse 5, for they choose to have this hidden from them, that the shame am, heavens were of old, meaning an earth age before this present one, and the earth standing out of the water and then in the water, meaning the entire earth was submerged in the water, by the word of Yahuwah. Verse 6, through which the world at the time was destroyed. Being flooded with water. The results in Beresheth 1 verse 2. The world is unintelligent, ignorant, and very foolish for not teaching this, that there are three earth ages in time. They will never see it or understand it because it is hidden from them, only Elohim's elect will have eyes to see, as directed by his Ruach, Kordosh, Omain. Let us look at this word, scoffers, as used in the living word. Now man is blessed, as per the law of Yahuwah. Tehillim, Aleph. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 6. Verse 1, Blessed is the man, that walks not in the counsel, of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers. Verse 2, But his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah, and in his Torah, does he meditate day, and night. The reason for the law is not to condemn you, 
but for the law to give you a pattern to guide you through all the trying times in your life. So when you seek counsel, you are showing that your delight is in his law, the Torah of his word, all of it, both first covenant and the renewed covenant alike. Yahushua didn't come to change the law, but to fulfill it. Matthew, Matthew 5 verse 17, Think not that I have come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Yahushua fulfilled all those requirement under the law that required blood sacrifices, for the atonement or covering for our sins. That is why we pray in the name of Yahushua, for in his name we identify that we believe, and accept his power with the authority through him, our great one, and king, Yahushua HaMoshiach, as the Ben, son of the living Yahuwa, his promise of a redeemer, who put our sins under his shed blood, Omain. Verse 3, And he shall be like a tree, planted by the streams of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, the leaf thereof also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Verse 4, The Rishuim, the evil and the wicked are not so, but are like the chaff, which the Ruach, is wind that drives them away. You can pay all your money in order to find counsel in this world, but you will not find the wisdom of Elohim there because there is no firm foundation in the words given in this world. People seek after happiness in all sorts of things. They seek it in man-made things and devices, but those things are of man, they are like the chaff that blows away when a small wind comes. You just cannot buy happiness, for it is not something you can obtain monetarily. So where is it? Happiness is found in your heavenly father's word. Your father is the creator of all things, including you. He knows how to bring you peace, and happiness when you are seeking it. If you seek happiness, seek the inspired word of Yahuwah. By seeking his inspired truth and rightly dividing each verse, and searching the scriptures with the proper study tools, and in Eckhart, the oneness of his Ruach, Dordosh, his Holy Spirit, that is within you, then peace will come, along with happiness, what you are waiting for. Always remember, the evil and the wicked will never prosper, but will only lead you right into the camp of the evil one, Ha Satan. Verse 5, Therefore the evil and the wicked, shall not rise in the judgment. The judgment refers to the rewards that we receive at the first resurrection. The evil and the wicked, will not be the for any rewards at the coming of the Great One, our Teacher, Saviour, Ha Yahushua Ha Moshiach. This is when we put on our incorruptible bodies that we shall have through all eternity. So no, the evil and the wicked, can have no part of the judgment, among those who overcame. This verse is leading to the end of this earth age, when this flesh age is over. Those who chose to be blown around, with every chaff of false doctrine, will have the thousand year period to get their act together, or they will cease to exist following the great white throne judgment. You can count on it, they will absolutely not stand in the midst of the righteous. Those who did not overcome will have no part in the first resurrection. Grace is not offered to them, but if they are to be saved, it will be by their works to be earned, as outlined in Hatson, Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15. By their works to be earned, during the millennium age, the kingdom of Yahushua, HaMoshiach, for that thousand year period, and will have to put them into practice, to be used in the second resurrection, to earn their just reward, be it immortality for their soul, or in the lake of fire, the second and final death. But presently, we are all in the flesh, and are all sinners, who must be first saved by grace, his shed blood, that wipes away our sins through our repentance, as we walk with him, to be rooted in his inspired word only, the rest of our lives, only through Yahushua, HaMoshiach, Omain. Verse 6, For Yahuwah, knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the evil and wicked, shall perish. Now the next psalm says that the whole world, all the earth, is, and will be, in the possession of Moshiach, and that Yahuwah assures Moshiach of this, therefore, the Great Commission, given to a selective few, his elect, in Matthew, Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, was given to preach Moshiach, 
to the ends of the earth, that the whole world may hear, his word, pertaining to his saving grace. Amen. Now for Tehillimbet. Psalm 2, verse 1 to 12. Verse 1, Why do the nations rage, and the peoples, imagine, a vain thing? Why do these people and their nations meditate on evil and empty things? Stop and look at all the nations today and the ways that they join themselves together in search for vain things. This psalm is talking about governments, politics and the emptiness in the minds of their leaders. Just because there is separation between church and state it doesn't give political leaders the right to be wicked and evil in their ways and thoughts as to what is going on today. Verse 2, The sovereigns rise up in rebellion, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah, and against his Moshiach, saying. These kings of the earth have joined themselves together in this one world system and these rulers join together for the sake of taking Elohim out of their religious system. Yahushua, HaMoshiach, is anointed by his father, Yahuwah. But these wicked nations of the earth today, have taken a position to stand against the counsel of the anointed one. This is what these kings and religious leaders are saying. Verse 3, Let us tear apart their bonds and throw away their ropes from us. What they are saying, we don't want to hear any more of these sermons on the teachings of Yahushua. Their one world religious system is taking him out of the churches, out of the schools, out of government, even out of homes. They are trying to break the cords that bind righteous people to the word of Elohim. Yahushua is the one spiritual force that all the other religions of the world are teaming up against. Of all the religions in the world, only Yahushua demands that there is only one path to follow, and that all others lead to a road of destruction. For his truth will prevail in the end. My friends, we must put the gospel armor on, and be prepared to handle all the fiery darts of Ha-Satan, and all these heathen religions that are against us. Though there is a great difference between church and state today, in a very short time it will be, joined as one. We are living in this final generation, and the time is coming when, they will be accountable for their actions, of wickedness that they have done, to both our government and its citizens, the people. Verse 4, He that sitteth enthroned in heavens laughs, Yahuwah mocks at them. Our Heavenly Father laughs when he watches down on all the ignorance that is going on under the name of politics and religion today for he will take their extensive plans and mix them up to where there is nothing but confusion. Verse 5, Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and distress them, in his hot displeasure. Remember that wrath of Elohim comes at only one time, and that is recorded in the book of visions to come, by Yohanan, Hatson, Revelation 11 verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Yahuwah, once again, and his son, Yahushua, the Messiah, shall reign for ever and ever. This is at the end when indignation of Yahuwah, comes upon the entire earth. When this happens, the world will stand terrorized at what they are seeing. Only Elohim has allowed our great nation to stand against the might of the world, yet even with all the blessings that he has given us, we still have these evil traitors, in government, by going along, with these Zionists, the children of Hasatun, Elohim is going to punish these ignorant fools, for your final payoff, has finally come, for the evil deeds, you have done, against us, the people. This punishment is coming in a very short time, and each of them will stand and be accountable for ripping us off, and by selling us down their evil river, for Elohim is going to terrify all of them, Omain. Verse 6, I have set, my king, upon Zion, my separated hill from all the rest. There is a day coming when our father, Yahuwah is going to set his almighty kingdom on Mount Zion, and there will be no other government. This happens at the coming of our Yahushua, at the seventh trumpet. There will be no other government or congress, to be playing around with their evil wickedness by taking him, our Yahushua, out of this government. Omain. Verse 7, I inscribe for a law, Yahuwah, has said to me, 
You are my Ben, today I have brought you forth. Our Yahushua came that first time, as a baby lying in the manger. He came in that first advent for one purpose, to die on the stake of wood. For the sins of all those that would confess that he is Yahushua, Ha Moshiach, the Messiah, and repent, of their sins. For Elohim gave his one love offering for once and all times, so that our sins could be forgiven, because the law within itself could not. The king has been crowned and the way is set. The king is coming to take his rightful place on the Mount of Olives. Freedom shall reign, and Elohim will be upon his throne. Here we see that Elohim has declared it. Verse 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the nations, your inheritance, and the ends of the earth your possessions. Verse 9, Break them with a rod of iron, dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Verse 10, And now be wise, O sovereigns. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. This is an alert call from our heavenly Father, be wise therefore, this warning is to the kings of this earth, the congressmen, judges, and mayors. It is addressed to any man or woman that sits in a seat of authority, and Elohim is warning each and every one of them, for they will be all accountable for every decision, they make. The warning is to be instructed by his word. And that word is what sets the standard for the councils that are seated on the bench of authority. That warning is written, so let there be no mistake. The rulers will be held accountable for their leadership roles, as well. Verse 11, Serve, Yahuwah with reverence, and rejoice with trembling. Our evil leaders today are taking pleasure in their moves to play into hands of Ha-Satan, there better be some fear and trembling in their prayers, before it is too late for them. For they play their games in politics. Only to hide their true hidden motives. Yahuwah will save his own who serve him with reverence today, as we are heading down this road into one-worldism. Verse 12, Kiss the Ben, son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that take refuge, in him, Moshiach. Kiss the son means to love him, the son of our father. Loving the son is the only way to salvation. Without out your love for him, there is no other way to eternal life. This is a warning to those that refuse to pay respect to Yahushua, Ha Moshiach, the Messiah. For the wrath shall kindled against them. The true time of wrath is yet coming, but at the appointed, separated time, we shall see the full force of wrath of Yahuwah, coming upon the earth. Hats on, Revelation 11 verse 18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come? and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them, which destroy the earth. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. All those that take refuge in his inspired word will be blessed, by Yahuwah our Father as they study and follow the directions that he has given us through his servants and prophets. Rewards are coming to those that revere his son's name, Yahushua. And to those that think they can defy his word and his ways, will be in for eternal destruction, if there is no repentance in their hearts. For our time is running out, my friends, it is time to put on the whole armor of Elohim, and prepare ourselves, to make a stand and to be able to identify those who just don't care about Elohim, and our father's ways, whether they be in a government office, or behind the pulpit. Amen. Matthew, Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. Now for the Great Commission in. Verse 19, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember the veil has been torn in the Holy of Holies, and the all the nations can now also come before the throne of Yahuwah in repentance. We are to teach them the entire plan of Elohim, from his inspired word of truth, whereby Yahushua shed his blood on the stake, that can cover their sins, and they can become the sons of Elohim. We are to tell them of the good news, that the Messiah came to earth as a baby, lived, 
and was crucified for the sins of many, and by repenting to the Father in his Son's name, the name Yahushua, they also can have their souls, washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, then becoming white as snow, and have eternal life. Upon repentance, they will be baptized, from above, in the name of the Father, Yahuwa, the Son, Yahushua, and the Ruach Kordosh, His Holy Spirit, Omain. Verse 20, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Did you see what we are to teach? We are to teach all things that the Great One, our Teacher, taught us in His words of understanding through the Holy Spirit, as Yahushua, the Messiah commanded us to do so. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 19. These are those who cause division, sensual, having not the Ruach, Hakodesh the Holy Spirit. For Jude is telling us that all those men that do not agree with the inspired word of Elohim, are separated, from the Spirit of Truth, which is Yahuwah, and they carry other spirits of evil. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 20. But you, beloved, build yourself up in your most Kaddish, set apart, Amuna, the faith, making tefillet, prayers, in the Ruach HaKodesh. Now my friends, always do that, to remain true to it. Our faith is built up in the spirit of Elohim, and it is by his spirit that we gain our wisdom and understanding of his inspired word. When we are saved, our spirit is in him, and the Holy Spirit is in us. As long as you are a believer, and have faith, there is no other way that you can pray, for if you have an evil spirit, that spirit does not know how to approach his throne of love, and grace by the Almighty, our Father, Yahuwah. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 21. Chuma, keep, yourselves in the Ahava, love, of Elohim, looking for the Rachamim, mercy of our master, Yahushua HaMoshayach, to eternal Chaim, life. Keep yourselves in the love of Elohim and not the love of man. You keep yourselves always in the love and mercies of Elohim, by continuing in your studying of his inspired word and by following its instructions. That is to be walking by faith in the ways of our great one, our only teacher, Yahushua HaMoshayach, the Messiah, and the results of just by walking in his ways, that are eternal, meaning forever, O Main. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 22. And have Rachamim, mercy, on some who doubt, making a difference. You can always tell Yahuwah's elect by their compassion and patience, for they care about their brethren in Yahushua, the Messiah. O Main. Jude is urging us to have patience in our studying, and wait on the Messiah, as his Holy Spirit, the Comforter to come to teach us all things. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even a garment defiled by the things of the flesh. To see that abomination of desolation that continues, and then trying to pull them out of the fire for their salvation. Amen. Yehuda, Jude 1, verse 24. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless before the presence of his Shechina, the divine presence, with exceeding joy. To those that are able to keep you from falling, to exceeding joy. That is happiness, the joy, that is pleasure, that brings one to that point. Though we fall short many times, we have repentance in the Messiah whereby those sins are forgiven and we can start again with a new slate. My friends, when you continually repent when you fall, just keep plowing ahead, to the judgment in the end, for you are being presented before the Heavenly Father in all his glory, as a faultless, and will see the joy that comes from that reward, of your inheritance, that you will receive, as one of the heirs, of Elohim, O Main. Yehuda, Jude 1 Verse 25. 
to the only Elohim, Yahushua, HaMoshiach, the Great One, our Savior, Beast Team, and Greatness, and Might, and Authority, both now and forever Amen. Now to be Beast Team means to be respect, admire, value, regard, acclaim, appreciate, like, prize, treasure, favor, and revere upon him, Yahushua, HaMoshiach, forever and ever. That's that, you can take it or leave it, my friends, for that's what Omain means. Omain. What a beautiful, rewarding and exciting book, filled with so many spiritual foundations in his truth. Certainly great building blocks to use in one's faith, the everlasting truth of his inspired message that is all-knowing but is unseen to them in the world, for they lack his understanding, and don't know it, as he teaches us, in his inspired word, that is everlasting, to the ears of his elect, O main. For Yahushua is our only Savior, the one that brings us salvation through his obedience to the Father, by going to the stake, and giving up his life, in order that we can live as new spiritual beings. That was once dead, but now alive in the world. He alone receives all the glory, honor and praise from us for being our savior and uniting us back to the Father, Yahuwah, who saves and restores our soul back to everlasting life. As one is born from above, brings back life to our dead spirit body, and restoring our soul, which makes us complete through only him, once again, allowing us to approach the throne of our loving Father, Yahuwah, as joint heirs with Yahushua in his new dominion to come. A dominion is king with his royal subjects, where Yahushua is our king, and his domain is here on this earth, for all those new living souls that are part of it, even today, as they wait on their king's return, at the seventh trumpet. For his kingdom has come, and dwells within us, O main. So you can see my friends, there is a great deal more to common salvation for we are expected as sons of the living Elohim to know the signs of the times, and the seasons that we are living in. We are expected to know the parable of the fig tree, and the fallen traps of the Kenites that lay before us, and the ways that they have entered into our congregations and changed the doctrines of our teacher, to make void the word of our Father, Yahuwah. For we are in the latter days, and the final generation, for many of the events have already taken place, and now should be history to us, the living. Now Harsat Tun and the fallen angels may be on our doorstep in a matter of months, totaling only a very few years. But for now, is the time to study and prepare for the great deception, that is coming on all those dead souls in the world, and we will see, as it is written, and exposed to us, therefore we will not be shocked or deceived by it. As we praise Elohim for the wisdom of his word, and thank him for it. The book of Jude is a warning to us of those evil and wicked angels that will be cast out upon the earth with Harsatun, at the sixth trumpet. But their evil spirits are here today, so don't be fooled by these evil men in the world. When they come to seduce the hearts and minds of those that refused to study, and learn the simplicity that is taught through Yahushua, in his inspired word, for only by being sealed with his knowledge, you become the property of Elohim, for Hasatun is pre-warmed, and then forbidden to touch, those that are belonging to the Father, Yahuwah. Ha Amin. We want to thank you for studying along with us. From, Ador, the congregation of Smyrna, who are proud to have presented the study of Yahudah, Jude. This great book in your Bible.